Hi, I'm Andy Stewart. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Physics here at the University of Lim Limerick. And uh, so, what do I do? What do I, what's my day to day job? Well, partly I do lecturing, and uh, mainly I sort of focus on, on my research. And so, people say, well, what do you do? Well, if you don't want to talk to them, you say, I'm a physicist, then normally that's the, the end of the conversation. But if you want to sort of engage them a bit more, I tell them that I study relationships. What do I mean by I study relationships? Well, physics people normally think about quantum and big particle accelerators and all these crazy difficult things. And in one sense they are, but in another sense they're incredibly simple. Everyone really understands what quantum physics is, whether you know it or not. So you can be a student, and then you can also be a friend, or a daughter, or a son, or a mother, or a father. And you're all of those things, depending on your situation. And that's what quantum is. So you take your electron, and you put it in one situation, and it acts one way. And you put it in another environment, and it acts another way. So that's, that's quantum physics. You, you understand it. You do it on a daily basis. It's not that hard. So what's that got to do with me? Well, I use electron microscopes. These big, tall uh, machines, the one I use is about four meters tall. It sits in a big, impressive box, makes it look like the world's most advanced fridge. Uh, it's, it's really quite an impressive instrument. What we use this for is to, to look at the bonding uh, in crystals and, and the positions of atoms within crystals. So why do we want to do this? What, what's the point? Well, I say that I study relationships, right? So I study the relationships between the atoms just like to find out how they work together and what they do. And uh, in the same way that you have different relationships with different friends in different times and different places that you are. So you've got your family relationships, which are really strong, cohesive bonds, and they're going to be with you your entire life. And I would sort of say that's like the covalent bonding in certain molecules. And then you've got the relationships, which are your acquaintances at work, people who when you come close to them and then you work in an environment with them, you know, everything's good. But you may be with them at work, but when you go home, you may never speak to them again. So you can think of that like ionic bonding. So you take your salt that you've put on your, your dinner and you take the salt in its, its normal form and you put it on your chips and everything's great, it's lovely. And take salt and you put it in water and it dissolves and it's disgusting. It's horrible, but all that, what's happened is the, the environment's changed, so the bonding has changed and the way it works changed. So these are the types of things that I study. Another type of bonding that we'd be very interested in is hydrogen bonding. So what's hydrogen bonding? Hydrogen bonding is like this weak interaction between atoms. And this weak interaction is a bit like the daily relationships you have. When you go into a shop and you interact with someone, and you, you're talking at the counter with the, the shop assistant, and then you go and you're standing in the queue waiting on the bus and you just say hi. There are these kind of weak daily interactions and you have hundreds of them every day. In fact, they're necessary for life. It's hydrogen bonding which keeps DNA together and how DNA opens up and closes. That's what your hydrogen bonding is. It's very, very key to your social environment as a human and it's also very key to your chemical environment as a person. When we're looking at all these different relationships, like how, how do we do it? So basically we look at crystals. Uh, is, is mainly what we do. So I put uh, crystals in this big TEM, this transmission electron microscope, this huge fridge-like uh, object that we, we put in our samples. And that actually allows us to see the atom columns in a crystal. And so we can actually see atom by atom what's going on. And uh, so I then study like how close or how far apart uh, these atoms are relative to each other. Just like if you took a crowd of people, you can probably guess who are friends, who are not, by the sort of proximity to each other that they stand and how they, they interact with each other. So that's essentially what I'm looking for. So why is, why is this a thing? Why, why do we want to know this? Well, it turns out crystals are everywhere. So the fact that you can see me right now is because proteins uh, form a crystal in your eye to create the lens. Your teeth are crystalline, your bones are crystalline. Depending on the length scale you look at, the cell walls in every single cell in your body can be crystalline. So crystals, are, you are crystalline in a sense, depending on the length scale that you look at. So understanding how all the atoms within these crystals interact plays a huge role in who you are as a person. If they break down for whatever reason, then you want to be able to design drugs which then interact with, with those atoms and molecules in your body in order to, to get you better again. 
Another area where crystals are incredibly important is in the pharmaceutical industry. If you take a drug, you have to understand its crystal structure. So that means that the, the atoms within the crystal, or the molecules within the crystal, I should say, um, line up in a certain way. And if they line up sort of in one configuration, then it changes the physical properties of the crystal. What does that mean? It means if I put it in a, a glass of water to drink the drug, then it will dissolve in a certain way in my body. If I take the drug in another form, so it's the same molecules, but you then stack them in a different arrangement, the physical properties can be very, very different. And so although it's the same drug going into your body, in one case it will release at a nice slow pace into your, your system and you'll get cured, you'll get better. Uh, in another instance, the drug could be absorbed so quickly into your bloodstream you would die. And obviously no one wants that. So understanding the physical properties of all these crystals is really important. So it's not only the relationships between the different atoms and the molecules, it's the relationship between the molecules themselves which make up the crystals. So the whole encompassing thing is very important uh, in helping us understand how the, the world works. In general, it's just about curiosity. So you take your average desk in school, a nice wooden top and a a leg, a metal leg. It's understanding why when you put your hand on the desk on the wood, it, it doesn't feel cold. But when you touch the leg of the, of the table, it feels really cold. But they're both sitting in the same environment. Why? It's that curiosity to find out why. That's what drives us every day. The electronics that you use in your phone and your televisions and your cameras is all based on crystals. The dyes that you use uh, in your clothing every day, all based on crystals. The pharmaceutical industry, many of the drugs, you as a person uh, are, are semi-crystalline in a way. So it's, it's the drive to understand all these relationships and the curiosity to look at your environment in a slightly different way. That's what drives me as a, a physicist and that's what drives my research and the students I work with on a, a daily basis to look at the world in that slightly different way. And, hopefully understand it a little bit better. So I'm Dr Andy Stewart. If you want to contact me about my research or anything else, you can contact me at the Department of Physics in the University of Limerick. Thank you.